Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Ranking Member. Thank you for including me. <clears throat> many of us in the Senate, like many of you in the House, and more importantly, like millions of Americans, watched with grief the video footage of abortion doctors and others discussing the sale of baby body parts for profit. As a legislator, uh, but more importantly as a father, I have three little kids, three precious ones. One of my little girls traveled with me from Nebraska to D.C. this week, and she's here with us today. Um, more importantly as a father, I support your investigation and your commitment to get to the bottom of what's going on here. Let's begin by stating clearly that we should not have to be here today. Uh, the 1993 NIH Revitalization Act <clears throat> includes a testimony where California Democrat Henry Waxman said, and I quote, this amendment that I am offering would enact the most important safeguards to prevent any sale of fetal tissue for any purpose, not just for the purpose of research, any sale for any purpose. It would be abhorrent, Waxman continued, to allow for the sale of fetal tissue and a market to be created for that sale." Close quote. Words are important. The report language and the floor debate created a very clear legislative intent that no one should profit, no one, from the sale of fetal tissue. Yet here, in today's documents and exhibits, we see a business brochure and a website urging, quote, partner with us and improve the profitability of your clinic. Improve your bottom line. Be financially profitable. These are quotes. That procurement business offers a payment per tissue to abortion clinics, and it offers to do all the work. That would appear to mean that the abortion clinic has no costs, and it would thus appear to be precisely about profit, as their marketing literature says. Questions of profit and legality matter because we're talking about people. It matters whether or not procurement businesses broke the law. It matters whether or not abortion clinics are lining their pockets through the dismemberment and distribution of children, all while receiving tax dollars. It matters because we're talking about the tiny limbs of little babies that have dignity. They're broken, yet still precious, children of actual mothers and fathers. As the committee's exhibits indicate, web pages exist where a customer can click on a drop-down box that lists every organ of a baby for sale. You can click on a brain, a heart, eyes, or a scalp. Then you select your gestation period. Then you proceed to check out, and you decide the method of shipment. We should pause to linger here. Our humanity should be repulsed. We should all be sad by this. In this committee room and across the country, we will obviously have passionate disagreements and discussions about the legality, the justice, and the social implications of abortion policy. Like many in this room, like a majority of Nebraskans, and like a majority of Americans, I believe that every baby is precious and worthy of legal protection, even at our earliest phases of development. I'm unashamedly pro-life. But I also understand that many others disagree on abortion policy. Our disagreements on abortion will sometimes be heated, but wherever possible, we should be looking for consensus. And here, on this basic reality, we can and should agree. Babies are not the sum of their body parts. Babies are not meant to be bought, and babies are not meant to be sold. Babies are just that. They're babies. They're meant to be welcomed and rejoiced over, held and nurtured. Outside of our congressional responsibilities here, many of us do in fact welcome, hold, and nurture little children. We adopt and we foster and we mentor them. We offer hope, support, and encouragement to their parents. Madam Chairman, your work can and does transcend politics. I appreciate also your concern with children born alive inside abortion clinics and with the treatment that they receive. When I think of all the survivors of abortion, and I think about your investigation into the sale of baby body parts for profit, it makes born again, born alive legislation all the more important. The Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act has already passed the House by a bipartisan vote of 248 to 177, and I've had the privilege of introducing the companion legislation in the Senate, and I invite my Senate colleagues on both sides of the aisle to be working together to pass this bill in our chamber. This law would simply ensure that babies who survive abortions get a fighting chance by requiring medical attention that is equivalent to what would be offered to any other premature baby born at the same stage. No life is disposable. No child deserves to have her life ended cold and alone, struggling for breath outside the womb in an abortion clinic. We Americans frequently cheer for the vulnerable. We fight for the minority. We protect the powerless against the powerful, and baby girls and boys are fighting for their lives. 
I encourage my colleagues to fight for them and to support Senate 2066, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Madam Chairman, uh, we look forward to monitoring the progress of your investigation and thank you for including me in this hearing.